Hey everyone, The Motivational Professor here, and in today's tutorial video, I'm going to show you how to use Fibonacci levels or Fib levels to find your entries even on a 15-minute chart. This is going to allow you to be able to take advantage of better entries, and it's also going to give you the advantage of limiting your stop loss. So if you're wrong, you take a minimal loss and you avoid getting deep into drawdowns. That's why the FIB levels work so well. I'm gonna show you how to do this on multiple time frames, and I'm also gonna give you some examples as well in this video. So before we get started, hit that like button for me so more people can see this video and take advantage of the information. Are you ready? Let's get started. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do is I wanna help you set up your Fibonacci levels. So on TradingView, go over to this left-hand side menu, and in this category right here, you are going to click on this box, and you're gonna see different choices here. Your first choice should be Fib Retracement. If it is not your first choice, then find it on your list. And what you want to do is to save it as a favorite, you want to click on this yellow star here so it could save as one of your favorites and it'll always be on the top of your list. Now what you want to do is you want to go ahead and click on Fibonacci retracement. Now, in this particular case, we are going to study and we are going to look at this section right in here, okay? So we're gonna focus in on this example right in here. So we're gonna kind of bring this into a wider screen so you can kind of see what is going on, okay? So I'm pinpointing this area for a couple of different reasons, but also mainly because here, I just wanna kind of show you this real quick, right? Uh, here, looking at the 15 minute chart, we had this price, and I'm gonna have to change this color to red. We had this price here, Okay, take off. You can see here that this candle abruptly, quickly pushed up very quickly into this area. So what I want to do now is I want to be able to catch a FIB level when price begins to come back down into this area. So what I want to do is I want to go ahead and grab, again, going up here to the left, clicking on FIB retracement. I want to go ahead and place this FIB at the bottom. So where price begins to take off, that is going to be your first line. And I'm going to explain it in a middle, in a minute, I'm sorry. And then we're going to come up and we're going to drop this Fibonacci level here. Let me explain why before I get into the actual numbers that you need to have. So again, let me grab an arrow and we are going to place the 100% or where it took off at the bottom, okay? That is going to be our initial entry here. And then at the top, I'm going to place where price began to retrace back down. So once we see this 15 minute candle begin to retrace back down, that's going to be my high point. So I'm going to go from this low to this high. So I want to set the 100% here, and then I want to set the zero line here. Okay. So I'll explain that here in just a minute. So now that we have these FIB levels, let me explain these settings so that way you can go ahead and accurately have these settings. So once I click on any one of these FIB level lines, you're gonna see this box down here appear. And again, I'll grab an arrow and I'll show it to you right in here, okay? Well, it actually disappeared. Okay, so once you click on any one of these FIB lines that are right here, okay, it is going to open up uh, the settings box somewhere on your screen. For me, it's down here in the lower left-hand side. What I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and click on this settings wheel and I wanna click on it. Now that is going to give me the different numbers that I like to use in my Fibonacci ratios. Certain traders will use certain numbers. These are the ones that I'm accustomed to. These are the ones that I like to have on my chart. So at this point, you wanna go ahead and check out the system that I have here and feel free to pause this video and make sure that your Fibonacci levels align with the ones that I'm using. So for example, here in the top is my zero line. I have it checked off because I want that used for all of my Fibonacci charts. Then I have the 0.382 and I have that checked off. 
I then have the 61.8, and I have that checked off. I have the one line, and I have that checked off. Then I have the negative 61.8, and I have that checked off. I have the 0.5, checked off, 1.786, checked off, 0.886, checked off, 1.272, checked off, the negative 0.27, checked off. So make sure that your coordinates look just like this within the chart. Now you can change the colors that will appear on your screen for every Fibonacci level if you want. In this particular video, I'm keeping the background white so it's easily seen by more people. I've gotten a few comments saying they would love to see the white screen. You can let me know uh, down below uh, in the comments section if the white background is better than the black background for you and whatever monitoring device you are watching this video. So go down to the comments and let me know if you can see the screen good with white, type in white. If you like the dark background, as I do on most of my videos, type in black and then I'll change it as needed. Okay. So let's kind of get back into the chart here. So now that you've verified and you're happy with the colors, you can see a couple of tabs up here. Okay. I really do not mess with the coordinates, and then again, the visibility, you wanna make sure that you have all of these marked off as well, because this will give you the visibility on all the different charts with regards to seconds, minutes, hours, days, and so forth, okay? So again, we just did our style, we have our coordinates, and then we have our visibility. Any of these look different, and you wanna change them, again, pause the video, change them, and then what you wanna make sure that you do is, if you wanna save it as a template, you can come here to the bottom and you can click on save as. And for example, I'm going to put TMP for the motivational professor fib levels, right? And then I'm going to save it. That way, every time you save it, you can bring up which template you want to use, okay? Then when you're ready, you're going to click on okay. And now you should have the fib levels aligned with what you want to do. So I'm going to show you here in this first example how I would utilize uh, the FIB levels. Now, this is going to be a part of your trading plan. So if you are going to use FIB levels in your trading plan, you want to make sure that you tell yourself and you stick to your rules, whatever your rules are going to be. So I'm going to give you an example using this example right here on the screen. So in this example, if we were going to trade this Fibonacci level. And I'm going to kind of go back to the replay tool and I am going to exit out of here and I'm going to come back here for just a minute. So as we take a look at this Fibonacci level here, and I'm going to make this wider so you can see that home, you've got to make sure that you are aligned to your rules. Okay. And I'm going to give you an example of what that might be. Okay. So I'm going to hit the replay and I'm going to kind of go back to this area right here. So here we are as a trader and you're telling yourself that you know because you've heard me say it and you've read upon it that the I'm going to grab this square I'm going to put it here that you want to trade near this 61 point area right you understand and I'm going to kind of change that color here okay you understand let's make it a little bit darker okay you understand that that is an area that tends to have a high percentage of reversals OK, so from my opinion and everything I've studied, especially with crude oil, the 61.8 and the 50 percent gives you your best opportunity for reversals. Now, price can sometimes go under that, but I'm going to show you how to manage your trade if you decide that you want to use specifically the 61.8. And this is where you and your trading plan is so important and you have to stick to the rules. You've got to pick maybe one or maybe two to say, this is where I will enter. And then this will be my stop loss if price continues to go against me. If you do this every time, you are going to be successful at trading crude oil because I'm going to show you how you'll be able to scalp it and take some long-term trades as well, depending on the time frame that you want to trade in. So for me as a scalper, I live off the five and the 15 minute chart. And I'm going to show you that here in this example. So when we go back to our chart here, you've got to ask yourself if this is going to be your entry, 
right? You're going to look at the 61.8. Then you want price to go there, and that's going to be your entry. So your long position should look something like this. If you grab a long position, right, you want to be somewhere in here and realize that this area is never a line. It's kind of an area. So I kind of like to put a box around it and say, okay, I want to enter somewhere in this box area, and I want to take this back up to the zero line, but I'm going to have my stop loss be the 88.6. So the reason why if you're going to trade FIB levels and you want to win you know, more trades, but at the same time, you want to manage your risk. This is how an example on how you can manage your risk to reward, right? You're going to see here on the screen, this is almost a two to one, almost a three to one. But the most important thing here is that because you have a tight stop loss, even if you get stopped out, when you start winning some of these two, three to one ratios, it is going to make up and you're still going to be a profitable trader. So as we kind of go back to the chart, if this is my trading rule, okay, and I'm going to stick to this, then that is going to be my exit, the bottom of this frame here, which is the 88.6. Because if price comes down here, it might continue going further down. So now as we hit the replay tool, right, we can see here that if we stuck to our rules, and I'm going to pause this, then we, in a matter of, you know, 45, really 30 minutes, we hit our take profit because we stuck to our rules. Our rules were that we were going to enter at the 61.8 and our rules were that we were going to exit the trade at the 88.60 if that was part of your trading plan and we were going to take profits back up at that zero line. Now, according to you and your trading plan, if you wanted to allow this to continue to the upside, then you would just obviously follow your trade move your stop loss into profit and manage your trade. That is probably the hardest thing for traders to do is what do I do once I get into the trade? Well, you have to have a plan for before you get into a trade and then you have to have a plan what you do to manage your trade. And that's one of the topics that we'll be talking about in our members area coming up. So if you're not yet a member, the link will be down below in the video description. Click on it. $4.99 a month to join our members area for mentorship, guidance, trade opportunities, and a private chat. So in this particular example, right, you would have hit your game plan, right? Now we know based on what we see, right, price continued to go up to the upside, and this is where you would need to manage your, your trade. So now let's go to another example here. So let's wipe this out, okay? Let's wipe out the four drawings and let's kind of go back to a different time frame. Let's go now to the 30 minute time frame. Let's kind of move the charts uh, so we can begin to look at different areas within the chart and what we might or might not do. Okay, so here's another area. And this is what I like to look for. Again, we talked about it. I like to find when I see a big impulsive candle like this, I like to set up my trade opportunity. So here that we have that, we're going to do the exact same scenario here right? Here's that impulsive candle, okay, that we were talking about. And so we are going to grab this Fibonacci retracement and we're going to go from this bottom where price began to take off and we're going to find the high point, which in this case was this candle right here. We can see right here that we wicked and then we began to come down. So as we begin to see price come down, we are going to lay our Fibonacci level there, okay? Now here, if your game plan is the same that we just did, then you're going to grab a long position and you are going to put it at the 61.8. We are going to make our target the zero and we are going to make our exit the 88.6 area, right? So again, following the rules here, right? We could uh, say here that this one was another successful trade. And why was that is because we did one of two things. First, we found the impulsive candle where price just took off, right? A lot of money was introduced to move price up. So that is step number one. For me, I find that impulsive candle, right? So we have that. Then we make our Fibonacci. Once we see price begin to retrace back down, we set our uh, long position here because obviously we're looking for a retracement down to then have price come back up. We did that. 
We followed our rules. We had our stop loss at the 88.60. Uh, we were in drawdown for about 10 points, and then price reacted and came back up. So here we see another example on how if you are going to choose the 61.8 and you are going to choose the same parameters that we talked about, you had another successful trade. You followed those rules. Those are my rules. If I'm going to trade FIB on the lower levels, I need to see an impulsive candle, step number one. Then I need to see when price begins to retrace, okay? And then I am going to set up my FIB level. So that's two examples on how to take a FIB level on a buying position. Now, I'm going to go back to the chart and I'm going to go back here and I'm just going to kind of move this over and see if we can find any rules that follow that on a sell opportunity. Okay, well, here's one right here. Now, I'm going to do this a little bit differently. I'm going to grab my FIB level. Actually, I'm going to grab this and I'm going to delete this. So I'm going to show you right here, right? We have a big impulsive candle coming down. Now we had a second impulsive candle coming down. So that is step number one for me. I now see that impulsive candle coming down. Now I'm going to grab my FIB level, but here I'm going to go opposite. I'm going to set it from the high. Excuse me. Let's grab the FIB level tracer again. I'm going to grab it from the high and I'm going to swing it down to where price began to come back up. Okay. And so in this case, what I want to do is I want to set the zero line right here where price began to come up. And so here I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so you can see it. Now I'm going to follow my rules. If this is my rule of using the 61.8, which I like, okay, because I get a better price point than the 50 percentage. Okay, so here now I want to do a short position. So I want to enter near as price is coming back up. I want to enter near the 61.8. I want to put my stop loss at the 88.60, but I want to keep my profit level the zero. And so you can see here now that as you are following the rules, right, here was another successful trade with the Fibonacci levels. But in this case, it was a short versus a long. So I've given you now multiple examples. If we go back to the chart, you can see here that in this short amount of time, if we followed the rules that we talked about, finding the impulsive candle, setting up your Fibonacci ratio, setting your stop loss and your profit zone for this 2.32 to 1 ratio, keeping it there, then you have back-to-back -back profitable trades using the FIB levels. We did a couple on the 15-minute chart. We did this one on the 30-minute chart. And I'm going to show you a final example here on the one-hour chart, which then will give you a little bit more opportunity uh, to grab possibly more points. But remember, the higher time frame that you go, then your risk on the stop loss side is also going to increase. Okay. So make sure that your risk management and your lot size is according to your trading plan. Whatever your risk management plan has to offer, you've got to make sure that you stick to the rules. But you can do this two, three, four times a day on a smaller time frame and be very successful if you stick to the rules. Okay. And an example here of this would be if you go here, for example, and price did not come to the 50 day move, or I'm sorry, the 61.8, right? Let's kind of back up here and let's just show you another example as we kind of scroll back. Okay. We take a look at this Fibonacci, right? Price took off from here. Okay. And I'm going to show you this again on this candle right here. This was our impulsive candle, right? We see price come up very quickly in this particular area. So now what do we do? We go ahead and go over to our fibs. We hit our fib retracement. We go from this bottom and we're going to take it to this top. Okay. We can clearly see here that this is where price began to retrace. So now we have our high point. Okay. Now we have our high point. Again, you can see here a third time. There's our 61.8 here. Okay. So in this particular case, as a third example on the 15, right, we set our Fibonacci level here. Now we need to set our, in this case, long position from the 61.8 back up to our zero line, okay, which was here, and then our 88.6. Now we can see in this particular case, and I'm not going to confuse you, I'm going to go ahead and delete this Fibonacci level, right? Price came up in this scenario up to this point right here, right? And then retraced down and would have hit your stop loss if you did not properly manage your trade. So this is a good 
example how you can set that take profit, but if you're going to trade on a smaller time frame, you've really got to be watching what price action is doing. Because in this example here, let me show you why this should have been a red flag and a concern. If you looked to your left while this trade was going, what do we see here? We saw that price never really went above this area or closed. We had this big wick, but we really didn't have any closure up in this area. Well, guess what? Where did price come to again? Same spot here. So this is where looking at the price action and saying, okay, maybe I need to grab a box and say, wow, price here really has not closed above those areas. This might be a better take profit area for me because of that. So if you were in profit here, 70 pips, and you did not trail your trade, you, did, you started to get greedy, this is where a winner can turn into a loser. If all you do is go into your platform, whether that's your phone or a trading platform on your desktop, and you just enter the numbers as your parameters, but you don't follow the trade on a smaller time frame, you can say, wow, I was winning 70 points, and now you lose 40 points, you're going to be upset as a trader because you let a winner turn into a loser, right? So you've got to watch your trades as far as it's not just plug and play, right? Trades will not always work in our favor, but here you had a for sure winner. But if you just missed the one step of moving your stop loss into profit, especially if you're busy, if you're working and price does reverse, at least it can stop you out with some profit versus turning that winner into a loser. So you've got three examples now, a couple examples how that worked out, a couple examples how you still needed to manage your trade because in this particular case, it did reverse on you. So for my final example, I wanna show you one on a higher time frame. So let's kind of jump over to a one hour chart. Okay, so now we are sitting on a one hour chart and I wanna show you how sometimes when we talk about the impulsive candle, let me show you this example right in here, right? This candle here uh, takes off very abruptly. If you notice here, there is no wick at the bottom of the candle. And this candle basically eats up these previous two hour candles. So this here, even though the candle doesn't look as large as this candle here, right? This is an abrupt move up. And that's what you want to look for uh, if you're going to trade and use the fibs using this strategy. So in this particular example, we're going to go off of that candle there uh, just to show you how it may not always be the large candle, but it'll be a candle that just shoots up with very minimal or no wick whatsoever. Now we're going to put this Fibonacci there at the bottom of that candle, and we're going to move our zero line to obviously this wick right here because this is where price began to retrace down right in here. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and apply our rules, right? So we had price take off to the upside. And what happens in many cases is in this particular case, right? We see that the retail people start, you know, buying here. Oh my God, crude oil is going up. Let me buy, let me buy. And then boom, right? This happens here, right? This happens here. So again, we kind of see that because the reality is this candle probably moved so fast that we missed this initial retracement. But if you look at this candle here, it came down perfectly to the 61.8. But again, we did not know where the, the top side is. Basically, we had no warning, so we missed this first one. Then price comes back up, and now we get a couple of wicks, and then we now we have a 15, 30, we have a 45-minute span that we can begin to see that price is beginning to crawl down. So this lets us put our Fibonacci levels there. Okay, then we follow our game plan and we go ahead and grab a long position because we're looking for that retracement and we're going to set it at 61.8. But now because we're on the one hour, our pips or our points go higher because the zero line is going to be much higher and our stop loss is also going to be a little bit more. But the ratio kind of still stays the same, right? It's still a 2.27. And so as you can see here, we came and we bounced several times off the 61.8, and then eventually we took our profit. Now, if you manage this trade, we can see here that price continued to the upside. But again, we're looking for consistent profits. We're sticking to our trading plan of going from the 61.8 back up to the zero, 
And again, you can see here that in this case, uh, it netted you 110 points, which could be the trading week for you, right? Again, you know, one of the biggest issues with trading is the greed factor. People get greedy. If you can consistently, and that's what we talk about in our group, and the folks in my members group will tell you over and over, I like to grab 20 points and get out for crude oil, especially how crude oil has been obviously very bullish lately. Uh, you know, we've been finding some of the nice retracement areas. If you're taking some of the cells, 15, 20 points, get out. You do that two or three times a day. That is a nice trading day. The days of 5 10% on trading per day. It's unrealistic. You cannot sustain that. I'm willing to challenge anyone on that aspect there. Just grab a very small percentage per day, a, th a third of a percent. Understand that the big money marketers, those that uh, trade big accounts, okay, for money market managers and hedge fund managers and capital fund managers, they look for half a percent a month because they're trading million dollar accounts. You do the math. If you can get half a percent a month on a $10 million account, that is some nice return on your investment. But one of the negatives about Forex is so many people on YouTube and other platforms saying you can grab 5 8% a day. That is just not realistic for you to sustain. That comes with a lot of risk, and you need a lot of capital to do that. So most people here are humble, grateful people just looking not to live paycheck to paycheck, make a little bit more. You know, I want to thank Bruno in Portugal, one of our members who has come, who showed me recently in the last couple of days, what the average salary is for, you know, officials, teachers, and what he's doing in our trading group is exceeding what the national average is in his country. So kudos to you for doing that. And he's finding discipline and consistency in our members area by trading this way. So again, shout out to you as well, my friend. So that is one example on how you can use that example here. Now, let's kind of like slide over and let's kind of get rid of this example. So we just had this one example here. But if you notice, and this is why you have to be in the charts, reviewing charts and looking to see what charts are doing on a consistent basis, right? So if we go right over here, we can kind of take a look here. It may not be as noticeable, but let's take a look at what we have here. Number one is we had the impulsive candle right here. All of a sudden, no wick price took off, right? That is clue number one. Clue number two is, or step number two is, we're going to grab our fib retracement and we're going to go from this bottom to where price began to reverse, which was this wick right in here, right? We wicked, the next candle is down, perfect. Now we can set our Fibonacci level at this point and we're going to wait for price action to do its thing. Let me get rid of that and let me zoom in. Now we are going to follow our rules just a couple of hours later on the Fibonacci, right? Uh, because understand that price on an uptrend moves up, retraces, up, retraces, up, retraces. So what we are looking to do is we are looking to capture that retracement. We are looking to capture that retracement. We are looking to capture that retracement on an uptrend, which is what we are seeing here, right? So now we want to catch this retracement here. So we grab our long position. We grab it here. We set it at our 61.8. We make our profit levels because our game plan says zero. We mark the red to our 88.6. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so you can see it. And there is our trade. Again, a 2.33 to one ratio. So example after example, right? How you can be profitable by following and sticking to a game plan. We did it on the 15-minute chart. We did it on the one-hour chart multiple times, both buys or sells. Here's the thing. You should practice doing this. Don't just start doing this with your live account, right? If you want to experiment, you can. But go to your paper trading account. Go to your demo account and practice this. And look at your wins to losses. Look how when you win a trade, because you're winning 2.3, 2.75 per trade, if you take a loss every once in a while, you're still on a two-to-one. So you're still always going to be profitable. So that's why when you look at this type of system, you have to be able to tell yourself, hey, if I if this is the way I want to trade, at whether I'm at the one hour time frame or I'm at the 15 minute time frame, right? Then you are going to be able to have opportunities because I took that exact same trade now and I wanted to show it to you. 
And all I did was implement it on the 15 minute chart. Now the difference here was that this fib level would have come down here to where it took off, right? And our zero line would have been moved up to where price retraced. And guess what we have? This still worked out on the same 61.8 area. So you still would have had a winner. And of course, if you would have followed it, you would have made a lot more, right? So again, you're seeing opportunity after opportunity. And I'm hoping that today's training tutorial on fib levels with crude oil has given you some hope that you can have a trading system or another tool in your toolkit to say, I wasn't looking at this before. And this is why I like the 61.8 with crude oil. I've seen it over and over. Do I catch every retracement? Absolutely not. Do I catch enough to be successful and to be consistent? Absolutely. I use it as a trading tool along with zones of support and resistance. And then I'll even throw in the 50 day moving average. And again, these are things that we'll be talking about more in depth in our members area. So I hope you got some value on today's video. Again, if you did, you can help me out by taking the time to create these free tutorial videos on YouTube for you. Hit the like button for me. I would appreciate it. If you want to share some comments below about future videos that you would like to see, drop them down below in the comment section. As you know, I get back to everyone within 24 hours. I appreciate you watching. And if you care about other people, you can hit the share button and share this video with them because maybe something in this video turns on the light bulb and they can become a better trader because of it. So sharing is caring. And if you're in my members group, thank you so much for your loyalty, for your support, and more importantly, your trust. We've got some amazing things we're going to be doing in our members area to close out 2023 and move into 2024, not worrying about how much money we're making, but the percentages that we're making at the same time, staying humble, staying grateful, and realizing that uh, money is a very small part of life's equation. It's about loving what you do. It's about living in your purpose and living in your passion. Okay. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next video.